actually just watched your birth video and it's just so inspiring again like I've been looking through your feed and your YouTube channel <laughs> it's so nice like the work you're doing is just incredible it's so thank needed. you thank you and I loved your video as well it was so so beautiful and I think what was really interesting about it is you almost look like you were enjoying like the crowning and the baby coming out were Honestly, you yeah it was the most surreal like beautiful experience I was absolutely loving it even the wow. final stages which had been more intense with my other two I really like uh, got into such a state of peace and I just loved every part of it like even the late stage it was really nice you know wow so was this your first free birth so yeah my first free birth and um, I'd had one of my babies in hospital and then one at home and then third time round, I decided to free birth so it just, it just made sense, you know, as you go on through the babies, you get more confident, <laughs> don't you? Exactly. It's like, I mean, I did this two, three times already. <laughs> exactly. I can pretty like much that. do this by myself. <laughs> I've got this. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, at the time, I'd, since my first baby, I'd trained as a doula and a hypnobirthing coach. And I was really into all this holistic stuff. And it okay. just made so much sense to me. And really my second birth was like a free birth because I had a good friend who was a midwife there. So she okay. just let me kind of left me to it really. Um, wow. But it was nice to have her there just to know if anything happened. But mm -hmm. third time around, it just felt so right just to be in my own power with my kids there. My little four-year-old was in the bath with me and 
she actually was the first one to touch the baby as little my little boy came out, which was amazing. I loved when you seen his hand pop though and she grabbed his little oh. hand. I was like, what? <laughs> so cute. I've got the most amazing pictures from it. Like wow. I had a birth photographer there the whole time and the pictures are just amazing. Like she really grasped when the when the little her baby's hands came out and he had his eyes wide open and just how she caught him was just so beautiful it's gorgeous so what are your children's ages so I've got a one-year-old at the moment and mm -hmm. a four-year-old and six-year-old yeah so they're quite wow. close together and your genders are so one girl and two boys wow yeah. congrats <laughs> yeah it's been so, I'm so blessed and it's been such a journey I think I just, I'm so grateful that you're doing the work and getting this spread across the world because so many more people just need to trust in their bodies and just having, I think people worry when you say free birth, they, they mm -hmm. panic and think, oh, they're putting themselves at risk. But actually I think it's the most natural thing we could do. If you look mm -hmm. back, you know, thousands of years ago, it was just the way, wasn't it? Everyone would just yes. be at home with their family and they'd had the local midwife maybe bob in a few times but mm -hmm. it's just so um you know natural just to be in your own space and I wish that more people you know had this knowledge so it's so great that you've got this platform <laughs> yes and even through your video sometimes all it takes is for a mom to see a video of another woman doing it and then once they see it it just sparks something that they read that was already inside of them and they're just like yes I can do this so I hope I'm, I'm thinking there's going to be someone special watching today that's really going to be inspired by your video. So oh, I hope so. Let's get into your birth story so we can start like when your first contraction started and you can let me know about all your feelings that you felt and we'll just go through it. It was interesting with my third little baby, my free birth because all the others have been around their due date. And actually I went to nearly, well, I went to 42 weeks with this little boy. And wow. so actually I feel like my labor started around 40 weeks in a weird way because I started having the most intense Braxton Hicks for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And every day I felt like convinced, oh, this must be the day, this must be the day. And it really made me do the inner work. And I remember at the time I was getting calls from kind of lots of people just saying you need to you do not need to get help and assistance like you're going into 42 weeks and <laughs> you have to switch off don't you just turn your phone off just switch off from the world too much because I even had the local midwives and um, in the UK they're very much they keep an eye on you let's say okay and they were calling me and they'd heard that I was having this free birth and <laughs> I remember I had to really, really stay strong in my power and just say, mm. trust that it'll happen at the right time, at the right place. And um, so, yeah, I was 42 weeks, pretty much exactly on the day. Wow. And I'd been having these really, really strong Braxton Hicks all the way through the days and nights over like a 10 day period. And the day I woke up on the 19th of August, I just felt this really strong contraction as I woke up in the morning, which was amazing because all my other births had been at nighttime. Mm. So I felt like, oh, this is, this is it. This is the day. <laughs> and I knew, I knew that day I was like, this is it. Um, and I just, as you did at your birth, you just kind of carry on your day as normal. I got up, I kind of got ready, had a beautiful breakfast with the kids. And start, I remember we had pancakes that day because I was telling my partner, I was like, I think it's the day. Let's have some special treats. <laughs> <laughs> so we made our best vegan pancakes, and Aww. yeah, and I, I, I booked in um, reflexology. Funnily enough, that day wow. uh, as a little treat for me because I was going on to forty-two weeks. So I knew I had reflexology, and I thought, well, what better like nice way to get outside, like with the kids, and just you know, as normal, go on a walk with the dogs. So <laughs> near where I live, there's this massive hill. <laughs> like it's like a mountain okay and for some reason this my intuition just told me you've got to go and climb it <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm serious I'm four serious. to two weeks and you're climbing a mountain <laughs> it's, well, it's so funny though is it's so different than my other births because I've been very internalized with those and I just wanted to rest and stay on the sofa and stay at home but because actually which is an important piece of information this baby was OP so he was back to back Wow. And I knew it because I'm a pregnancy yoga teacher. All the kicks were like in my belly button. So mm -hmm. I just knew that 
mm. this birth is going to be completely different than my others. And it was, it was one of my longest labors. Um, and it was not, not that that was a bad thing. It just meant that I had to, I had time to enjoy the whole process. And I absolutely loved on your video and on how you emphasize when a contraction comes or what I call a surge, mm -hmm. you say yes and embrace it. Because <laughs> yes. That's what I was trying to do every time I had that. And I remember walking up this hill where there's lots of steps. <laughs> and every time I'd get like 10 steps up, I'd just like squat down and I'd say yes. And just say a really positive intention to myself. Like you can do this. Like I've got this, you know. So I kept like climbing up to the top and something called me there. Like I just needed to set a clear vision and a clear intention. I'm such a big believer in the power, well, the law of attraction. And I really wanted to like manifest a really positive birth. So I just set the intention at the top of this hill. <laughs> and then I thought we better get home because I've got reflexology. So we got all the kids. We had such a lovely walk. So I just kind of carried on as normal. We got home and I asked my partner, he, he wanted to take the kids to the park just so I could really, really relax and just try and just switch off while I had that reflexology session. And I've been a big believer in reflexology during my other pregnancies. Um, and she just started the treatment and I had the most intense, amazing, powerful contractions during the session. And at this point, they, they were very sporadic. You know, they were like, when I woke up in the morning, there was like one and then it'd be like 45 minutes later then 20 minutes and then 30 minutes. And then it would be very different. So okay. I knew that I wasn't in active labor yet. Okay. Uh, but during the session, I had like about four or five like really really strong ones and they kept then at the end becoming quite thick and fast <laughs> <laughs> so I thought after that I was like it's probably time just to start resting and relaxing and staying home now <laughs> not going out anywhere <laughs> so I just I remember at the time as well I'd um my partner had like bought in all this fresh organic food and it, <laughs> it was so funny because <laughs> I was like it was a Sunday and funnily enough I'd always given birth on a Sunday and I, I said to my partner, we should have a big roast dinner for the kids. <laughs> because you are, you're vegan as well, aren't you? Yes. I yeah, yeah. So, so you'll, you'll appreciate this. So okay. he started roasting a whole watermelon <laughs> with, all no. these, with all these herbs and spices and soy. And, and it was just wow. so funny because I think his way of keeping focused with the kids was trying to keep them in the kitchen and make this delicious like roast dinner later on. And I found it hilarious. I kept walking through with all these herbs and these vegetables. <laughs> oh so I left okay, wait, hold it. on. So the watermelon, he roasted the entire thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it really worked. Like when I had dinner later, when I was in full active labor, it was delicious. Like with like miso wow. spice and teriyaki. And it was so mm. yummy. Mm. I really recommend oh it. It tasted like me doing <laughs> weird in a way. It was like wow. that kind of texture. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try that. Yeah, it was really <laughs> good. And it was like refreshing in a way and not too heavy when you're in labor, which is funny. Okay. So yeah, anyway, I um, was chilling out and I was just relaxing on the sofa and doing all my hypnobirthing relaxation. So I'd kind of recorded, you know, I got my favorite people reading like the affirmations and the deep relaxations. Mm -hmm. I, I do KG hypnobirthing, the English version, you know. Okay. Um, and I was just listening to my calming music, bouncing on the birthing ball. And it was really nice. The kids kept running in and finding it hilarious. Like they got their little balls out and they're just pretending <laughs> to do the exact same thing as me. <laughs> and my little boy, who was two at the time, he was mm -hmm. jumping under me, on me, on my back. Like it was quite funny because wow. in my other labors, I'd been very much internalized. Mm -hmm. And I think there was something about this baby being back to back that made me like okay to be a bit more active and I was like doing deep squats and I was like doing deep lunges and and I was having fun with the kids like moving around with them which whereas in my other labors I'd found that I just needed quiet and I really needed to switch off and um, so it's very sim it's very in interesting and I was saying this at the positive birth group I held last night that you've just got to you can't expect anything you can't know what to expect really on the day you have to just flow with it and what you feel internally you just got to go with it you know your internal just trust your intuition yeah but and the so, fact that yeah almost the fact that your kids were like so calm and copying you just mm -hmm. goes to show like 
how safe and normal they felt. Yeah, like it was just like a regular day for them. It wasn't traumatic at all. So I love that. <laughs> they, they just love like every part of like, and I, I think it's because I made sure I talked about birth all the time. I watched um, some birth videos, like even off your page, there was this like in this gorgeous pool in Bali and River, my little girl, she's called wow. River. And she was just obsessed with it. She'd asked to watch it on repeat. And they were singing like the Gayatri mantra and it was very, because I'm into yoga, it was very spiritual. And, yeah. and she just was amazed. She was like, please, mommy, can I be there? Can I witness this? And she just, oh. I knew from the start, she would not go to bed that night. She wanted to watch everything. Wow, I can't believe she asked you. Yeah. That is so amazing. <laughs> Especially at four, like she was very intuitive. Yeah. As it progressed, um, I kind of kept taking time just to be by myself a little bit. And I called up, um, the doula that I had about was it about two o'clock and I was saying look they're getting quite regular now um, and she she said oh I sound so relaxed on the phone she I think she must have thought I was in really really early stages mm. uh, but she said I'll, I'll start making my way packing my bag and getting over to you and then I called the birth photographer as well I think I played it down a lot because I was like oh I'm fine I'm all chill <laughs> we're, we're cooking we're outside we're like chilling in the, on the sofa like everything's fine um, and as the afternoon progressed, it was probably about like four o'clock. They, they got to a point where they were, every time I had a surge, I had to really focus, you know, internally and go into a quiet space. Um, and then when it'd go away, I was okay. And to like move and talk mm -hmm. and do my positions and things. And that was when it started just to pick up a little bit more from there. Okay. Um, but at this time, I can't remember what I did. I, oh yeah, I went out on the grass outside. I really wanted to ground myself ready because I knew that, right, this is it now. Oh, I did wow. some little videos just to kind of explain what was going on and to kind of like play at my birth when I released my birth story and things. And yes. um, so yeah, I just kind of felt really calm. I just was in my home little bubble and I picked the smallest room in the house. I had a big water pool set up and <laughs> I remember I bought in about 20 new like botanical plants. It was just full of plants and wow. I made like a pillow mountain in the corner where I could just snuggle into. And there was, it was so beautiful, like the candles everywhere. I had affirmations all over the walls wow. and it was like my little paradise. And it just felt so lovely just to look around and see all the beautiful things. I made sure the, the room was really prepared. Um, so yeah, so at this point, I think the contractions were coming every 10, every 10 minutes or so. And then I went out and sat on the grass and I think time just suddenly like, it felt like that time to me was like an hour, but all of a sudden I remember it starting to go a little bit dark and it started to get to like six or seven or well, it must've been, yeah, about half six. And Chris called me in to go for dinner because I was just focusing, doing a little bit of chanting, doing a little bit of yoga movement on the birthing mm -hmm. ball. And, and I can't believe this, I've never been hungry in labor, but I ate the full roast dinner, <laughs> which is crazy. Like I, I was so hungry. I think I must've needed the energy. <laughs> wow, was that good? <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, it was so good. You need to try this. <laughs> so yeah, then I, um, I was sat at the dinner table on my birthing ball and um, eating, eating with the kids. And then my doula, um, actually the birth photographer arrived first. And she was just found it hilarious that she walked in and I was having contractions like every three minutes, but wow. at the dinner table eating. And she was like, what is going on in here? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, I expected you to be in your birthing room, like in the water or something. <laughs> um, watermelons. Yeah. <laughs> back to back contractions. <laughs> I was just kind of, I was just really going with the flow and just having fun. And I remember actually, even at that point, I was, start, I was really obsessed with like cleaning and making sure everything in the room was ready, which was crazy because I was already in a state of birth. Like I was about mm. to give birth and I was there making sure all the affirmations were up and everything was ready. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you found that even when you're in birth, you're like, you've got them nesting instincts still, like yes. everything's got to be perfect, you know, for baby. Yes. And I think it's more, I think we're more like that when it's a free birth or an unassisted birth because yeah. everything is more like, this is you, you have like so much responsibilities, but it also shows how talented women truly are. Like we can do so many things exactly. at the same time. <laughs> I'm just multitasking. I was there like putting the washing away, eating food, all, all this stuff, juggling yeah. the kids. And yeah, so then the doula arrived and, um, and then I felt, I think when everyone was there, I felt really like 
okay, this is it now, everything's gonna happen. And it really did, it was amazing. I think just as everyone arrived and, and my partner went upstairs to get our little boy to sleep, uh, which does take a while with our kids. <laughs> so <laughs> he went up for about an hour and giving him a bath and everything. And then, so I was in my birthing room and it was so nice just to have that time just by myself. I think my little girl was just chilling, watching telly in the other room. And um, and I just got, so I turned all the like lights down. I just made the, put the blinds down and like I made everything really dark and just had candlelight everywhere. And that must've just picked it up so much because then they felt like they were coming every two minutes. And my, I remember because my baby was OP, it was all in my back. I could just feel like such a tension mm -hmm. in my back. It wasn't like pain. It was just like at all the feelings yes. were in my back. I couldn't feel anything really across the front. It was really interesting. So mm -hmm. she got all the, the lovely doTERRA oils that I like love. And she was putting like peppermint down my back and like massaging all the clary sage into my back. And when she started that, I never wanted her to stop. <laughs> I was like, this is helping <laughs> so, so much. Wow. And it always been in my mind as well to try and keep active. And especially if it had been in the day, which it was, I wanted to make sure, because I remember at my first birth, which is a good point for anyone listening, is um, I never really like remember to go to the toilet often. Mm -hmm. And I found that if I would walk to the toilet and just try and um, go for a wee, even though you don't really need to that much, it just helped me because with gravity, like get up, move around. And I found every time I did that, every like say half an hour or an hour, it would just increase the intensity of everything. And I was just trying to keep really present and just welcome like all the surges. I just loved every time I get one, I was like, yes, another, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. So it was about the, the third kind of like bathroom trip where I was, my partner had got back then, he'd come back downstairs. Everything was really calm, the music was beautiful. I was walking into the bathroom and then I just had to like squat down on the floor and it was the most intense surge I've had the whole time. And wow. it took all of my might to get through it. And I was just like, breathe, breathe. You can do this, you can do this. And just then it might, I think that must've been transition for me because it was the only time that I started to doubt, like, can I get myself back into that room and get through this right okay. now? And my mind was like, I can't pick myself up. So I was like, okay, can you, can you help me? I got the doula and my partner just to help lift me. And I got straight into that water pool, which they'd been running. And I hadn't really been aware of that because that's what's good about having a doula. You just have them doing everything behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and I got into that water and it was like heavenly. It was just took all the <laughs> pressure off my body. I just felt like weightless. And I had, my little girl was so sweet. She ran upstairs as soon as I got in the pool and I was like, oh, where's she, where's she going? She's going to bed. <laughs> and she went and just jumped in a swimsuit and came oh. downstairs. <laughs> we'd never even talked about this like I never said oh you can you can come in the pool with me but I think because she'd seen that video on YouTube she was like oh that just looks so nice wow. so she just it must have just been in, in her head I've got to be there like I've got to be there so she jumped in the pool and the doula kept I, I kept asking for like cold flannels and things so the doula kept bringing them in from the freezer like these lovely cold flannels and my little girl would just put them down my back because that day in England even though it's usually cold it was actually a really really hot day so we had the oh. fan on we had like lovely soothing calming like cooling towels down my back and the doula as well my partner my, my husband Chris was just pouring water like trickling down my shoulders and tickling my arm which we do in like hypnobirthing <laughs> and, and I just felt like so supported so in the right place and like my body just everything just happened so freely. And what was interesting about my other two births is that stage always took quite a long time for me. And it felt very, you know, when you get that like ring of fire and that strong kind of like urge to kind of bear down, it was just really mm. like this time, as you'll see in the video was, it was just so smooth. And yeah. I think my body just knew exactly what it was meant to do. And I just trusted it. And I remember not, not ever like because with my teachings I don't teach to push I just let my body turn over to the sensation and I just use the breath like I just remember I kept breathing out for 10 and then big inhales and breathing out for 10 and and they say that on the exhale is when you produce the most amount of oxytocin so wow. it just felt really nice just to stay strong with the breath and um, and then I did feel I just could feel the baby crowning and I started to get a little like sensation there 
Um, and I knew it was time to start to turn around because I was like leaning over the, over the pool, just kind of rocking from side to side. So prop myself up on the little birthing cushion inside the pool, which are really handy if you can get a pool <laughs> full of them. And, yeah, and you'll see on the video, I just kind of, I just fell back into the weight of the pool and my partner was just like kissing me and cuddling me and making me feel really supported. And I think that just helped get the oxytocin flowing. Mm -hmm. and my little girl was just by my side. And at the time I didn't even remember her being there. Like I remember her holding my hand. I didn't realize she was actually properly kind of down <laughs> where the baby came. <laughs> it's really, usually I would have been a bit more like, oh, you can stay by my head, but actually it just felt really <laughs> natural. And my, I had my eyes closed. I was just, I could feel every kind of little bit of baby coming out. And there was a pause where like one of the shoulders came out and then she was just down there ready with a hand open, ready to catch little baby, which is so beautiful because I'd not even like told her anything of what to do. Um, so it just shows how our kids are so intuitive and they know mm -hmm. deep down what is kind of possible of the human body. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, so I, um, I wanted to do it where baby was born into the water and I held baby underneath so I could, because okay. what's so amazing is they can just breathe so naturally through the umbilical cord. Yes. And I wanted to watch baby like rise up really, really slowly and watch them take their first breath. And that was just something I'll never forget. <laughs> Wow. So it was so beautiful and I just kind of watched little my little boy take his first breath and I didn't even think about like what sex he was or anything like that at the time. Oh, you didn't, didn't know, know the gender? Oh no, no. Wow. Yeah, so I'd never found out with any of my children uh, okay. what the gender. But I was wow. sure it was a girl. I was sure and it really I, I didn't think for about it was about half an hour until I went, oh, <laughs> what is the baby? <laughs> Wow. So you didn't I, even notice at first. No, no. Go so into the whole moment. I think I was more um, interested in like, after just making my little girl have that moment with her and my, my husband and to everyone just to cuddle together and just stare at baby. And then it was only the doula that said, do you want to find out? Because I was, I think I had the baby so close to me. Mm. I hadn't really thought to look. <laughs> Wow. and then and the umbilical cord actually when um, he came out was wrapped around his neck and it was wrapped around his body like two times mm -hmm. so she had to really kind of untangle him you might see a little bit in the video that she does help me untangle him mm -hmm. but it just shows like you, you get so many women that say oh I had to be rushed you know for an emergency c-section or have like some kind of intervention because the, the cord was wrapped around loads of times and mm -hmm. it's just natural that's that's normal for the the baby you know it's been in there with the cord all this time yes. so it's, it's completely fine and the baby is um, not breathing out of its mouth yet until it comes exactly. onto it <laughs> so there really there is no restriction there's so much oxygen coming through the umbilical cord that's it exactly yeah. it's just so free-flowing and and that's why as, as well I wanted to delay the cord like the cord being cut at all or the placenta being away from baby for as long as possible I nearly did a lotus birth but then okay. I just with having two kids already in a business and things it was just hard I felt like I just wanted to wait you know I waited about seven hours I think until we did the little that's cord good. ties you know where you just sterilize them in a hot water and so it's not like the plastic it's nice and natural and so it would it was very gentle and we waited about yes about six hours until we cut the cord and um, but after the baby was born as well I was just sat in the pool and just enjoying that moment I at that time actually that was my only worry I think that I'd had that I had to process in the in the pregnancy because um my placenta had always taken a long time with the other children okay. so with this one it was the only reason I thought maybe I'd have to call someone out to help or not help but like to check everything was okay but actually it was all fine I had to get out of the pool and just relax on the sofa and just I just like got loads of towels wrapped around me and had that bonding time um but it was actually my doula who said oh should we stand up should we try and um like squat and try and get the placenta out and I didn't I didn't really feel like I needed to at the time so it shows you need to trust your intuition because at the time um it probably wasn't right you know it it wasn't the moment that I needed to so I was trying and trying and then I thought actually, this isn't really working. I just need to relax and hand it over to nature. It'll come, you know, it'll come when it's ready. Um, 
so it did take a good it was nearly two hours or a little bit longer interesting yeah yeah. how was your healing after with when your placenta came out yeah so I I always seem to have like the biggest placentas which is amazing (laughs) like really like this tree of life and so that was really nice I I had to I I really like to honor the placenta as well it's just kept your baby alive for so long so yeah I was I was fine I did you know you bleed a lot after um Mm -hmm. but in a few days that started to clear up a little bit and yeah I was fine I just I didn't have the strong like stinging sensation or discomfort or anything down there with the third which was interesting after the free birth because Mm -hmm. I remember in the hospital when I'd had my first and it's interesting I probably should have said this at the start when when I was pregnant with my first child I planned for a home birth the whole time and I was told that I had a rare heart condition so they found it out in my pregnancy so I'm very high risk you see Mm. um and after the birth they'd I had to get all the approval to be able to get a water birth and to be able to be off heart monitors and to all this crazy procedural thing in the hospital. And I remember after the birth, they were rushing me to have the placenta, like putting pressure on me. And and after the placenta came, they wanted to fit like a catheter. And I was like, no, thank you. Like <laughs> it's, all, it's all about ticking boxes, isn't it? And it was literally mm-hmm. because I hadn't gone to the toilet for a week after like an hour after the birth, they were like, right, we need to fit a catheter. And I was like, what are these crazy expectations that we give women that they should have, you know, like just tick a box that they have to, you know, everybody's different and it's just, we need to trust more. (laughs) So no tearing at all? No, no tearing. And I hadn't, Mm -hmm. I'd had a lot of grazing with my first baby um, Mm -hmm. and weirdly that was in the hospital. And, and then second and third baby, nothing at all. And funnily enough, my second baby was really fast. Uh, he was like four hours. <laughs> and wow. this one, it was from eight in the morning until um, it, he was born at 10, 55 PM. So it was quite a long labor, but actually my most enjoyable, which was interesting, yeah. It's interesting because almost every single mom who I've interviewed who've had a free birth, yeah. they none of them have teared oh, always yeah it's very very interesting what I really loved about your birth is it was really catered to you and your family like yeah. even with your you did the um cutting of the umbilical cord six hours later mm-hmm. like that decision was for you and your family and it worked best for you and I think that is like a really good point for the viewers watching like sometimes when you see things online you want to do like the full thing exactly like how she yeah. did it but it's important to always make decisions that are just for you like I can do semi lotus birth but you know it doesn't have to always be the exact same way and I think about your birth even with your daughter coming in like every single time you're talking about your daughter my eyes are filling up with tears Aww. It's just so, so beautiful. And it worked for you and your family. And I can't imagine how impactful that moment will be for her in her growing days. Mm. So, so beautiful that you're able to do that. It's so true. I mean, you don't know the impact that we're going to give those little children, even to have, even if they've just been in the same house and know that there's a home birth going on downstairs or they've woken up to the baby being there. And we have this sense of separation where they've taken away by the grandparents or the fam- or close family and then just kind of plonk back in this area where there's a new baby. And I think it's, it's part of the process. It's nice to have your child there, but like you said, it needs to fit with you. So some women, like with my second birth, because it had been so quick, I was actually really grateful that my little girl did stay asleep. Exactly. <laughs> but, but she was only two at the time and she wouldn't have probably... Um, well she would have understood it but she wouldn't have been as engaged let's say okay it's been so thank nice to be on here and thank you for all the work you're doing it's just been like fantastic to be able to go on one page and just scroll through so many positive stories and I'll definitely like recommend you to all my birth clients like just to go on and just get yeah. watching all the inspiring births <laughs> yes. yes oh thanks so much and have a lovely day I hope to you see too. you soon Okay, bye, April. Bye, lovely. Bye. Bye. If you guys have it, that was the interview with April Wild. I hope you guys truly enjoyed this video and I hope that it touched you guys in some shape, way, or form. So you can follow me on Instagram at Legacy Alone. 
on Legacy Birth, we inspire women to manifest the birth of their dreams, reminding them of how powerful and capable they truly are. So if you're new to this channel, click that red juicy button down below, down below. It says subscribe, it says subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful queens in the next video.